Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part two of my Force Change Password series. So obviously, if you haven't watched part one yet, go watch it. You'll find a link down below. Go watch it and come on back. We now join the program already in progress. So now we've got the date that they last changed their password, which might be never, which is 1190. Now I'm going to say if today's date minus date changed, right? If you take you take two dates, you subtract them from each other, you get the number of days between them, right? And the bigger dates are the ones that are further in the future. So today's date minus date changed. If that is greater than 30 or greater than or equal to 30, I don't care what you do, right? Or 90 or whatever you want to put in there, then we got to change our date, right? Must change password, not date. We'll do that code here. All right, we'll come back to that. Otherwise, they don't have to do their change. So if that's the case, we're gonna open up the main menu. We'll put that there. And regardless of whether they go to the main menu or the password change form, we're gonna close this logon form when all that's done. Okay, now in here, what you do is up to you. I like to give them a message first instead of just popping up a box, right? Your password is more than 30 days old. Please change it, right? Okay, and whatever other options you wanna put on there. And then we're gonna open up that logon form we just made. Do command dot open form, password change F. Okay, save it. There you go, there's all the code we need in our logon form for now, I think, I think forever. Maybe, I don't know. Extended cut, we're gonna do some extra stuff, but I think we're good for here for now. All right, save this. Always throw in a debug compile. Whoop, not run. Debug compile, my mouse is finicky. Oh, look at that, look at that, look at that. Variable not defined, ooh. Username equals username. Okay, this brings up an interesting point. Whenever you get this, always take a look up here and see where you're at, because this title bar up here will tell you what form you're in. We're in the password change form. Why am I getting this? Because, anybody, think about it. Why can't it figure out the username? Pause the video, give it a second, think about it. Well, if you remember, password change F is this guy down, where are you? The guy we made, right? We copied it, and what did I do? I renamed the text boxes on it. So it doesn't have a username text box anymore. It's password one, password two. So it can't compile this because the field doesn't exist. I didn't clear out all the VBA code in here from before. Now, we're gonna need a whole different set of code, so I'm just gonna get rid of all this. Most of the time when I copy a form, I just delete all the code, unless I know I'm gonna need some of it. All right, but that's another reason why you wanna debug compile, because it catches problems like that. If you were to go and like, you know, try to make an ACCDE file out of this, and when it tries to make that file, it's gonna give you an error message saying, I can't, I can't create an ACCDE file, and you're like, why not? Well, come in here, the first thing you should do is debug compile, and it'll show you if there's any syntax errors, it won't make the ACCDE file because it can't compile it. All right, so that's why I always say, throw in a debug compile. Every time you are getting ready to leave the, the VBA editor, debug compile. I wish that was an option that you could set. Like, every time I close this form, debug compile. Note the access team. I got all kinds of ideas. All right. All right, so let's close this. Let's go over to this form and work on our update button. Right click build event, all right? Let's change it, I don't want it to be log on button anymore. Let's come in here. Let's rename this to update password button or just update button. Okay, right click build event. I'll leave the cancel button with the quit in there because that just shuts the database down. Oh, I don't wanna change my password, just quit. <laughs> So here is where we do some basic validations to make sure that their passwords are valid. All right, now, for this class, all we're gonna do is we're gonna check to make sure that they put in password one and password two and that they're the same, okay? In the extended cut, we're gonna go into a lot more detail. We're gonna add some extra stuff. We're gonna require a strong password. I hate this stuff myself, but I get it, I understand. Really, I mean, if you're a bank, sure, or like PayPal or someone, yeah, okay, strong passwords are great, but for like my website, what's someone gonna do? They're gonna log on and watch your classes? I mean, 
anyways, um, minimum four characters, maximum 20. Have to have a lowercase, an uppercase, a digit, a special character, like an exclamation point or something, right? And then a button to see the password. That little button there you can click on and, and it'll show you what your password is. We're going to do this in the extended cut, okay? But for now, just some basic validation. So first we're going to say if is null password one, then message box uh, password one missing colon exit sub yeah that little colon there is a way you can put two or more commands on the same line i don't use it often but that's a good use for it right there just give me a message box and get out of town right okay we're going to do the same thing for password two so come in here and just change this to password two right password two blah 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 password two is missing exit sub and next up we're going to check to see if password one is the same as password two so we're going to say if password one is not equal to password two, then message box passwords don't match sub. And if you are smart enough to know that lowercase something and uppercase something technically will show as the same password here, there is an easy fix for that. And that is to change option compare database to option compare binary. What that'll do is it'll say that these have to be exactly the same. Now this takes effect over this entire forms module. But since this is really all we're doing in here, this is fine. All right, I covered this in a lot more detail in a couple other videos, including my developer classes. But if you want an exact match, then change that to binary. And you should always have option explicit in all of your modules and your four modules so that you don't accidentally misspell something and you miss it. All right, so if we get down here, we're good, all right? Password is good, or just good. And we can save it now. How are we gonna save it? With one line of SQL and an update query. This is why you should learn SQL. You could make yourself an update query over here if you really want to, but this is something that's actually better done in code. All right, so current db dot execute update user t set password equals pick one, doesn't matter, password one or password two, they're both the same thing. And close quotes, comma, next line. We're gonna also set date changed equals today's date you can put now in here if you care about it being to the minute but it's fine right and that okay can you use can you put just date inside the string new because we're using current db.execute if you were using do command dot run sql you could but current db.execute goes right to the table it doesn't go through the access interpreter i prefer this okay now, don't forget your where condition, right? Where username equals, and we got our username in a temp bar, temp bars, username. And close it up. And what I tend to like to do is I like to put these different commands on different lines in here. It just makes it more readable, right? So you got update user T, and then you do this, right? Set password equals that comma, and the next one, I sometimes tab that in, okay? And then like that, where username equals whatever. In fact, this isn't that long. You could probably be put these in the same one, do this. If you got a whole big long list of fields, then I do it that way. This looks good, see, much, much more readable. Update this, set that, where, blah. Same thing with select statements, right? Select, blah, from, blah, where, blah, order by, blah, okay? That will then update the user's password in the table. And that is going to do it for part two. Tune in tomorrow, folks, for guess what? Part three. See you then. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video 
to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90-minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. 
In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.